I believe you have a role to play, as does another. The King in the North, Jon Snow. Hey everybody, there's a whole bunch of new Game of Thrones Season 8 to break down, so if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm still doing that book giveaway too, I'll explain at the end of the video. Most of the main stars have a bunch of other projects going on, like Sophie Turner has X-Men Dark Phoenix, so give me all your Sansa unburnt jokes. People were asking her about Game of Thrones Season 8, so naturally she explained some of the timeline, when it's going to drop. She confirmed that it would not drop until 2019, which effectively means that it'll drop April, May 2019. Now, they could always drop it as early as March, but typically you don't see HBO dropping its major, major series in January or February. So that's why I'm not expecting it till April. But if you haven't seen the video I did for their shooting schedule, I'll link that at the end of this. But Leon Cunningham basically says that they're filming right up until June of next year. So in terms of principal photography, they have a long way to go. The practical reason for why it's taking so much longer is just because they don't have a third or even a fourth film unit that can film scenes simultaneously while their main unit is doing stuff because everybody is localized to the same two big places, Winterfell and King's Landing. So you just have a lot of people in shots. They have to film the shots from multiple different angles, which means a bunch of setups, which means it just takes much longer to get through scenes. The other big side of that is that it's going to take extra long in post-production because you have a bunch of dragons fighting in the sky. Imagine three dragons fighting each other because you have the Night King and Viserion, then you have Drogon and Rhaegal. It took a long time for them to do scenes like the Night King and Viserion, just one dragon in one person, or Daenerys and Drogon. Then you have episode six when you actually do have the three dragons on screen briefly. Just imagine the uber version of that with one of them looking vastly different. It's a little bit easier when all their models look relatively similar. But as you go back and you watch the previous seasons, you see there's this exponential increase in the level of detail in their dragon model. So not only are the dragons getting bigger, they're also looking better and better from a CG perspective. The side benefit of Game of Thrones spending millions and millions of HBO's dollars blazing those digital trails is that it becomes exponentially cheaper to do that exact same thing just a year later. So whatever they end up going with for that prequel series, it'll be much, much easier and much, much cheaper for them to do big, crazy stuff like this. But now because confirmed no new Game of Thrones during 2018, they will probably drop a lot more behind the scenes promos like they did in the lead up to season seven. So we'll get to see what's going on. It'll just take a little bit longer to actually get the episodes. The composer Ramin Javadi made this offhanded comment about how his music tour this season would be kind of like a trailer for season eight. This is what the actors actually said about their specific storyline, starting with Sophie Turner. So this is me quoting her. Things are going to be different for Sansa now that Littlefinger is gone, but that doesn't mean that it won't get any easier for her. It's going to be tricky for her because at the end of last season, she felt like she had everything set up. She had her family back together. They were in control of the North again. This season, there's a new threat and all of a sudden she finds herself somewhat back in the deep end. And without Littlefinger, it's a test for her of whether she can get through it. It's a big challenge for her without this master manipulator having her back. The thing that a lot of people forget is that for a couple seasons, Littlefinger was whispering in her ear, just inceptioning her with ideas, giving her counsel. She unearthed the letter Cersei made you write to provide proof of my betrayals provide justification after she murders me and after she murders you what does she become lady of winterfell <laughs> no that's not me so it really wasn't until that turn during the end of season seven where she sensed that he was trying to manipulate her and she suddenly realized what was going on and turned on him. So at the beginning of the season when she's arguing about getting rid of the car starks and the umbers, you wonder if Littlefinger had something to do with sowing that descent. Like you see him just carefully weighing the room in the background. Until Jon Snow comes back with Daenerys, she's de facto leader of the North. So the question is, is who does she listen to and who does she turn to for advice? Turnip Bran can tell her anything she wants to know, but she has to ask him the right questions and she probably doesn't always know what those are. So Samwell can help out with that because John Bradley, the actor, did say that the team of Bran and Sam will continue to be a big thing during season eight. He said specifically, and I'm quoting him, what I think links those two characters is that they're both characters who are in possession of abilities and skills nobody else has. 
between them, they're such a formidable team because, okay, they can't fight between them, like physically fight. They don't have much physical power between them, but both of their set of skills are so unique. Sam's penchant for absorbing knowledge and absorbing academia and his wish to apply that for the greater good, combined with Brand's visions and supernatural skills, mean that between the two of them, it's a real recipe for success. He should also have probably said under his breath a recipe for disaster because misinterpreting visions has been a big thing in Game of Thrones. Melisandre is the best example of that. Visions, prophecies can be a tricky thing. And you believe this prophecy refers to me? Prophecies are dangerous things. I believe you have a role to play. The follow-up for that, especially the Sansa unburnt joke, is making you think about what's going on with the Red Priestesses. She went to Volantis. She's probably going to come back with some of the fiery hand in tow, which is the fighting arm of the Red Priest, and Kinvara, who's sort of the more powerful version of Melisandre. Because I know everybody wonders how the Faith is going to weigh in on this war. You've had a couple of Red Priests and Priestesses parroting prophecy for the last couple of seasons. Now it's time for them to show in force and help out. The latest big new force that we know that they've cast for the show is the Golden Company. They haven't said anything about actually bringing the fiery hand on the show, and they haven't been seen on set, so we'll see if that changes. But they just have to invoke the power of the faith at some point, in addition to all these regular people coming together. So here's my big question for you. Let me know in the comments. What do you want HBO to do during 2018 to keep the hype alive for season 8? Now they have Westworld coming and we don't know exactly when Winds of Winter is going to drop. George R. R. Martin hasn't said anything specific about that, but it's always possible that we could get new book material. So that would help fill the gap, but it just feels like HBO will have to go above and beyond to try and do something to keep the fans happy. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight. Hold up.